All right, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today. I really do hope that. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Chelsea news video. Where I'm going to be talking about left backs. Uh, yeah, a lot of left backs actually. And Willie Ann. <laughs> I was going to say three things, but really it's two left backs that could be going out. It's Willie Ann that could be going out. And there's an Alex Tellez update, so it's really kind of left back orientated today. Interesting though, I want to pose a few questions to you lot and really speculate what could happen, as well as giving you an update. It's going to be good. So before we soar into the beautiful content today, I just want to remind you guys to sub if you've not yet done so. Hit that bell notifications icon because you know what, right? This is like a thing on YouTube at the moment. All or the vast majority of views don't come from subscribers because subscribers aren't hitting the bell notifications icon. So why don't, you, <laughs> why don't you do that? Thank you. Oh yeah, why don't you like the video? Also, help me out, man. Follow me on Instagram. All right, let's get into it. At present, Chelsea have two left backs in the shape of Emerson Palmieri and Marcos Alonso. Both interesting cases in their own right. Emerson, because man, at the end of last season, certainly at the beginning of this season, Emerson looked like an absolute baller, dude. His like stats and metrics at the beginning of this campaign was superb. He looked like a complete superb dynamic left back, complete in many ways at times. When he linked up with Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Eden Hazard on the left-hand flank last season, he looked superb playing at the highest level. Cool, great, awesome. But after a superb start to this campaign, he just sort of dropped in form and God disappeared. To the point where Marcus Alonso is being selected as a conventional left back over him, which is just insane, dude, because we all know Marcus Alonso, superb left wing back when he's afforded the opportunity to just camp forward, use a sweet left boot and not run back or get turned or have to defend or have to tackle or have to do anything else. He's good. If you told me that by the end of last season, or indeed a couple of months into this season, that Alonso would get his place as just a normal left back, I would make weird noises. As Piliqueta moving over there, there's another weird one. Obviously, he offers that defensive solidity, but anyway, they're just a, I'm, I don't want to ramble here. They're both really interesting individual cases. Obviously, we all know Chelsea want a left back, Lampard wants a left back, and by all accounts, we might be just about to sign one. Might be on the verge of signing one. That sounds better. So what's happening with these two current left back, left wing backs? Well, it does look like Emerson Palmieri might be cooked at Chelsea, which is so peculiar. Like, so easy to forget how well a player was playing recently. But Juventus won him apparently, and if Maurizio Sarri keeps his job at the old lady, I think he'll go in for him. Which probably makes sense for all parties in hindsight. I'm not sure how much Chelsea would charge for Emerson, but they would certainly look to make a return on their investment, especially since he's won the Europa League with Chelsea and played quite well. Sarri would probably fancy that. So yeah, I think, you know, get your money back at least and plus some good service out of him. Fine. Now Marcus Alonso is an interesting one and <laughs> Incidentally, it's another Chelsea manager that wants him in the shape of Antonio Conte wanting to bring him to Inter Milan. Now, Chelsea bought Marcus Alonso for £23 million from Fiorentina, I think it was, um, a few years ago now. Was it like four years ago or something like that? Anyway, he's 29 years old now, Marcus Alonso. So yeah, not that he had any pace to lose, but he'll probably be slowing down even more. It does look like Chelsea could actually flip Marcus Alonso for a profit and actually get £26 million for him. Uh, which is three million pounds more than they actually bought him for. I know he's won titles with Chelsea, but he is older now, and he's one of the, he plays in one of those positions that require a bit of an engine. But again, he just doesn't have an engine. But you know, if Conte m plays him in a system where he affords him just to camp out forwards, I would love Conte's into next season to have Marcus Alonso and Victor Moses as the starting wing backs because. Wouldn't that just be fun? I mean, they're both, they would both be there, but if they're not necessarily rotational wingbacks, that would just be rolling back the years and the nostalgia would be lovely. So where does this leave Chelsea? Selling both their wingbacks to former Chelsea managers. Well, obviously they're looking to buy a decent starting level left back as Piliqueta will remain as cover on both flanks, I imagine. And what are Chelsea gonna do for a sort of second choice? I mean, you could say as Piliqueta could be second choice left back, 
but really you need someone else I think personally and this is why I think would it be appropriate to promote someone like Ian Matson from the development squad um, the young left back very very promising obviously I think he made his debut for Chelsea in the Grimsby game I think he came on highly rated but perhaps not highly rated enough to be like a solid number two but if you bring in a starter have Ez Poliqueta as cover maybe maybe it would benefit him to come in and be the rotational player training with the first team a lot I think he's already done that quite a bit but you know just get more of a chance while still playing under 23 games in between to keep match fit but no I am just speculating but probably I think that would be a good idea rather than spending more money at this point and fueling all that war chest into problem positions on the pitch which potentially won't be left back after a purchase. Right, Willian, let's talk about Willian. Because Willian's been talking about Willian. We all know he came out to Brazilian TV or news saying that, oh yeah, I want three years. Chelsea are only going to give me two years. I'm not sure this can work. Lampard was not happy with his comments coming out saying that understandably and apparently uh, noises are coming out around Chelsea that he probably won't agree a new deal with Chelsea because he still sees himself as capable of getting a big contract three years plus at the highest level fair enough I guess he's a good player even if uh, Chelsea fans will be happy for him to move on I think a lot of them appreciate what he can offer but won't necessarily cry for him upon his departure you dig so where will Willian Wade off to. I couldn't do any more alliteration. Well, apparently he wants to stay in Europe. He wants to not go too far. He loves living in London and apparently has offers from rival Premier League clubs. Wondering where Willian will wade up. Yeah? Barcelona is obviously a big one. They've won them for a while. They've even though he's quite old now, they'll probably like the idea of getting him on a free, seeing him as a creative option, probably banking on him being able to do some creative work in the final third in La Liga. And wouldn't you just feel weird watching a Clasico with Hazard on one wing and Willian on the opposition wing? Just peculiar and interesting and just weird. But rival Premier League clubs, well, God, see if, if man, okay, right. If Jose Mourinho was still at Manchester United, you could bet your bottom dollar that they'd sign him on a free and he would go on the right wing to play for Man United. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is there now. He doesn't want to sign old players. He wants to sign new players to his credit. And yeah, if, even though it's a problem position still for them right wing, they'll be looking to bring someone younger in. Jose would probably still want Willian, <laughs> even though he doesn't need wide forwards at Tottenham. He'd probably still want him on a free. He'd see that he loves him. I think they love each other, to be honest. But would Willian go to Tottenham? Because let's remember, Willian's supposed to hate Tottenham. I'm not sure he'd go to Tottenham. It is really interesting. He wants to stay in London. He could go to Arsenal. Apparently all Chelsea players just go to Arsenal when they get old. Maybe. Would they offer him a long contract and decent money? Though? I'm not so sure. It will be interesting to see what happens to Willian. I think maybe the continent, but he, just the fact, because he's got offers from Premier League clubs, doesn't mean he's gonna go. But it kind of makes sense. They see an amazing Premier League player, a good Premier League player on a free clubs probably like West Ham would be like we'll give you a free year deal mate absolutely at this amount of money do you see what I mean that they'll see value in that so we'll have to see you watch this space I'll of course keep you guys updated and finally Alex Tellez right <laughs> I want to cite an article to you written by Simon Phillips, Chelsea writer on Chelsea News, who concisely gives you an update on what's happening with the Alex Teller situation. The article goes like this. This week has seen the momentum gather in Chelsea's reported pursuit of Porto left-back Alex Tellez. There have been at least three strong sources close to the deal who have reported at the very least that there has been some contact made and the three parties are in talks for a deal to happen over the summer. Portuguese publication Ebola have been quick off the mark providing the latest detail and it was them who claimed that Porto are now ready to cash in on the 27 year old Brazilian international this summer rather than lose him on a free next summer when his contract runs out. All sounds pretty positive and legitimate so far. The latest report from them as translated by Sport Witness claims that Porto are pushing for a fee that is closer to Teles's release clause 34.5 million pounds with the initial report stating that a fee of 20 million should be enough to seal the deal you know considering there's only 12 months left and they shouldn't really expect his buyout clause when it's a matter of months left on his contract they could well be encouraging other clubs to join the race in an attempt to create a bidding war here Chelsea will continue to negotiate and hope they can meet in the middle so that's interesting they want to get the maximum amount of profits out of the players they can understandably hence trying to bring someone else in you know push the price up 
But I think he, if he wants to go to Chelsea, he might have said to the club, no, make the deal happen. I fancy that. I don't want to have a bidding war with ex-clubs, you know. Because a player, a player was in, is within his rights to say that, or he'll say, I'll just sit out my contract, mate, go on a free next season, make loads of extra peas myself, bruv. I don't care. So we'll have to see what happens there, but it is very, very interesting. Obviously, Alex Tellez should be a, a sort of primary target for Chelsea in terms of his player profile, his offensive capability, he's got a superb engine on him and he can do defensive work by all accounts too, so really the kind of player Chelsea probably, well they have been looking at for a while, but probably the player they'd want now, so hopefully Chelsea can get the deal over the line for a bargain price and regardless, anything south of that release clause will be a bargain price for a player of his ability. So hopefully Chelsea can get it over the line. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want your thoughts and opinions on all the stories I spoke of today. Get down in the comment section below. Express yourself. If you've enjoyed the content, please like the video. That means a lot. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's it for me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby